Hi, this is Presh Talwalkar. Star basketball players always seem to get in a rhythm. They make one shot, and then they make another, and soon it seems like they can't miss. Surely this is evidence of the hot hand. Before you get too confident in this observation, remember that intuition is often a poor guide for probability. For example, imagine a basketball player who has a 50% accuracy rate so that each shot is like a coin flip. If you ask people to predict the result of 10 shots, they will have about 5 shots being made and they'll alternate between hits and misses. In reality, many times the player will have several hits in a row and several misses in a row. And this has nothing to do with the player having the hot hand or being on a cold streak. This is simply the result of random probability. So what's the answer? Is the hot hand actually true? In 1985, an academic study found the hot hand was a fallacy. They said the hot hand was a misperception of random sequences. In other words, the sequences of players making shots in a row or missing shots in a row were just the result of random sequences. A player who had made several shots in a row was not more likely to make the next shot than he was just to make a regular shot in a row. This study became quite famous, and for 30 years, we've thought the hot hand was a fallacy. A new working paper is saying there was actually a subtle statistical mistake in this paper. They're saying the hot hand does exist, and there's a truth to it. This is causing a little bit of controversy where people are trying to say why the original paper was wrong and whether the hot hand really exists. So let's go a little bit into the probability and see why this new working paper actually seems to have uncovered a statistical mistake in the original paper. I'm going to have to talk about a little bit of statistics and I'm going to talk about population formulas versus sample estimator formulas. So imagine you want to measure the average weight of all adults, and we have a population size of n. n is very big. If you wanted to find the average weight, you would take the average of each person. You would add up each person's weight, and you would divide it by the population size. The population formula for the average weight, the average mean, is mu is equal to 1 over n times the sum of each person's weight. Now, it's not often practical to take the average weight of millions of people. So what we do in practice is we take a random sample. And this will be for a sample of size n. In order to get an estimator of the average weight, we would actually just take the sample of the average. In the average. So our estimator, our sample formula, is the is x bar is equal to 1 over n times the sum of the individuals. So you can see these two formulas are actually pretty similar. The population formula, where we know each observation, and the sample formulas are pretty much the same, except we're substituting the different sizes in our formulas. But now let me ask you another question. Let's say you wanted to calculate the variance of the weight in adults. In a population of size n, the formula is to look at the square difference from the mean and then divide that by the population size n. That'll give you the variance of the population. So if you wanted to do the same thing in a random sample, you might think you could just substitute little n wherever you see big N, and instead of knowing the population mu, parameter mean, we would substitute the sample mean. So you would think this sample estimate of the variance would be a true and valid formula for calculating, for estimating the variance in the population. However, this is a biased estimator. And one of the main problems is we don't know what the true mean in the population is. We're relying on the fact that we're using a sample average in order to calculate the variance. So this introduces a little bit of bias. And in order to get an unbiased formula, we actually have to divide by n minus 1, which will make our variance in the sample a little bigger. You actually may have encountered this formula if you use a spreadsheet. 
you'll see that it actually, many times they'll calculate the sample variance and they'll divide by n minus one. So this is also true for the sample standard deviation. The lesson here is that the population formula will not always apply when you're looking at a smaller sample. Sometimes the sample formulas need to be adjusted to get an accurate estimator of the population. So now let's return to basketball. Imagine a player has a 50% accuracy rate so that each shot is like flipping a coin. In four shots, how often do you expect to observe a shot being made, a shot hit, after already seeing a hit? So there are 16 different ways that a player can uh, shoot with a 50% accuracy rate. And these will all be equally likely. Now in the very first observation where we have three misses and then a hit, there actually is no shot after the hit. So we want to know how often do you observe a shot being made after a shot already being made. In this first observation, the hit is already in the final shot, so this observation doesn't matter. In the next observation of all misses, there are no hits at all. So these two things will just rule out. So now we have 14 different trials and we're going to calculate how often do we observe a shot being made after a shot already being made. Well, in the first trial where we have all hits, there's a 100% chance that we're going to observe a hit after a hit. In the second observation, the first shot was a hit and the second shot is also a hit. The second shot is a hit and the third shot is also a hit. However, the third shot is a hit and afterwards we have a miss. So in two out of the three or 66 and two thirds percent chance, in this trial we observe a hit after a hit. So I can compute the same type of probability in each of the different trials. So what we're doing is we're looking at the empirical chance that we're going to observe a shot being made after a shot already being made. Now these 14 trials are equally likely and when you average this out, we find a sample estimate of only about 40% that we observe a hit being made, a shot being made after a shot is already made. And we know this is wrong because we know the true probability is 50%. Each shot is a coin flip. So after you make a shot, it's going to be a 50% chance. So there's actually a bias in the sample estimate because a lot of times when you just make one shot, there's a miss right after it. So that puts a downward bias on our estimate. So in order to get an accurate test of whether we observe a hit after a shot already being made, we need to adjust the sample formula to get an unbiased estimate of the true probability. So that brings us back to our two papers. The claim is that the original paper actually had a mistake in its sampling. It actually was more likely to pick sequences where you would have a miss after a hit. The new paper is saying that when you correct for this error, the hot hand actually does exist and some players would actually have a 10 percentage point increase in a shot being made as a, after a sequence of, of shots being made as opposed to a sequence of shots being missed. So they're saying the hot hand actually does exist when you correct for this sample bias. So what's the lesson in all of this? I know some basketball analytics is a kind of controversial topic and people don't want to say that statistics can be useful. But I'm still going to say we need analytics because intuition about probability can be very wrong. But this whole study shows us that we need to be careful. There are very subtle things that can influence the way we collect data and the way we analyze data. But it's pretty neat that they did find the hot hand is probably true. And this paper still needs to undergo peer review and be published. But from what I can tell and from the mathematics I presented to you, it seems like the hot hand does exist. So whenever you hear a commentator saying, yeah, you need to give it to him, he has the hot hand, for once it seems that analytics is supporting the intuition that sports fans had observed for a long time. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. 
You can catch me on social media at Presh Talwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. I've provided links in the video description.